Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Arjun Chaudhary. We are on the top story the tracking for you on Tuesday, the 10th of March. Future of Indo Pak talks in doubt after envoy meet Huriyat leaders. Pakistan and Afghanistan agree on rehabilitation of unregistered refugees. And Afghanistan women cyclists dream big amid oppression. And now for all the details. At a time when India-Pakistan dialogue had just resumed, defiant Pakistan envoy Abdul Basit held a meeting with hardline Kashmiri leaders Saeed Ali Shah Gilani on Monday. In a repeat of last year's events that wedged the gap between the two neighbours, once again raising concern over the future of the talks. A report. Pakistan's High Commissioner Abdul Basit met separatist leader Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani in New Delhi on Monday. This despite potentially angering India, barely a week after Indian and Pakistani foreign secretaries resumed talks in Islamabad, the highest level between the rival countries, after more than a year. India has long accused Pakistan of sponsoring militants in the disputed Kashmir region through their allegiance with the separatist leaders. It cancelled talks with Pakistan last August after representatives from Islamabad met with separatist leaders. It's reported Mr. Basit updated Mr. Gilani about last week's talks between the Indian and Pakistani foreign secretaries. They also discussed the political situation in Jammu and Kashmir, where a controversy is simmering over the recent release of a separatist hardliner. <laughs> और हम ये चाहते हैं कि हिंदुस्तान और पाकिस्तान के दरमियान तालुकात ठीक हो जाएं मैं आपको दिल की बात बताऊंगा वो ये है कि हमें पाकिस्तान के साथ भी मोहब्बत है हिंदुस्तान के लोगों के साथ भी मोहब्बत है हमें किसी के साथ दुश्मनी नहीं है लेकिन दुश्मनी और तनाव और झगड़े और जंगों का जो की जो बेसिस हैं दैट इज डिस्प्यूटेड टेरिटरी ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर Analysts say Monday's meeting is a provocation and have urged the Indian government to take a firmer stand against future interactions. I think the government of India should make it very clear to the Pakistani High Commissioner that this is not welcomed. But what is more significant is that Indian envoys in uh, Islamabad should also meet uh, the nationalist leaders from Gilgit, Baltistan and other parts of Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir who have been suffering under the oppressive rule of Pakistan's occupation. in that particular part the opposition has also weighed in on the meeting it's asked the ruling bharatiya janata party if the latest incident will scupper the process of renewed dialogue with pakistan would the bharatiya janata party and the government again call off the talks with pakistan because the last time around when the foreign secretary talks were called off the trigger was the pakistani high commissioners meeting with the huriyat separatists While Pakistan's interactions with the separatist leaders are common practice, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has refused to accept it as status quo. Analysts feel India needs to put an end to this practice, which remains one of the biggest roadblocks to resumption of dialogue with its neighbour. Avneet Rora for South Asia Newsline in New Delhi. The decision of the Islamabad High Court to uphold the death penalty of Mumtaz Qadri, the assassin of former Punjab Governor Salman Taseer, has evoked mixed reactions in Pakistan. While civil society has welcomed the decision, radical groups have condemned it. A report. Activists and liberals across Pakistan said the Islamabad High Court's verdict to uphold capital punishment for former Punjab Governor Salman Taseer's killer was a right decision. The court had on Monday dismissed Qadri's petition challenging his death sentence which was awarded by a lower court. The Islamabad High Court however dropped terror charges and commuted a death penalty sentence awarded under anti-terrorism law to Qadri. Conservative groups who have deemed Qadri a hero for killing Taseer demonstrated outside the court after it upheld the verdict of capital punishment. They said they will continue to support Qadri. आज इस जज के फैसले से हमें दिल्ली तौर पर बहुत दुख हुआ और ये एक इस्लामी जमहूरिया पाकिस्तान है ये कलिमा तैयबा की बिना पर बनाया गया इसी खातिर ये मुल्क हमने हासिल किया था किसी भी मोमिन के लिए नबी अलीलाम की नाबमूस सबसे मुकदम है गाजी ने जो काम किया हम सब इस पर खुश हैं और हमेशा उनकी तायद करते रहेंगे 
Qadri, the former bodyguard of Tasir, opened fire on him in January 2001 outside his Islamabad residence for his outspoken criticism of Pakistan's blasphemy law. Tasir had demanded a revision of the stringent law, which made him a target of many extremist groups in the country. He had also run into controversy for visiting a blasphemy-accused Christian woman inside a jail in Pakistan's Punjab province. Blasphemy is a serious crime in Muslim-majority Pakistan and any insult of Prophet Muhammad or desecration of the Quran invites the application of death penalty. Rights groups have long criticized the law claiming that it is being widely used to target religious minorities and settle personal scores. The Bangladesh Supreme Court will start hearing a petition with Jamaat Islami leader Mohammed Kamru Zaman next month, challenging his capital punishment. The 62 year old filed a review after the apex court recently upheld a sentence awarded by the International War Crimes Tribunal in 2013. The Jamaat leader was handed down the death penalty after he was found guilty of committing crimes against humanity during the Bangladesh Liberation War in 1971. If his review plea is also rejected, Kamru Zaman can seek presidential clemency. However, his lawyers have not confirmed if he will seek it. The ICT established in 2010 has so far sentenced over a dozen people for the involvement in war crimes in 1971. Islamabad and Kabul have reached an agreement to document unregistered Afghan refugees in Pakistan. This comes after Pakistan recently began deporting thousands of Afghan refugees in the country, despite requests from Afghanistan. Pakistan and Afghanistan on Monday agreed to set up a joint committee to look into the repatriation of undocumented Afghan refugees. The two countries have also decided to seek help of United Nations High Commission for Refugees to facilitate their settlement according to the proposal of the Ashraf Ghani government. Islamabad has, however, refused to extend the deadline for the registration of new refugees, which ended in December last year. Pakistan is home to some 2 million Afghans living illegally in various cities of the country. The government had ordered the deportation of unregistered Afghanis living in the country after the Peshawar school attack in December, citing security threats posed by them. This had uprooted thousands, including many of those who had been living in Pakistan for decades. Most of them either fled Afghanistan in the 1970s and 80s following the Soviet occupation or were forced to seek refuge during the hardline Taliban regime. Many of these immigrants don't have proper documentation, making them unaccounted, keeping them under the suspicion of terror links. Cricket fans in Bangladesh knew no bound of joy after the team scripted history by reaching the quarter-final of the ongoing ICC Cricket World Cup on Monday. This is the first time the Bengal Tigers have qualified for knockout rounds of the big tournament. The whole of Bangladesh broke into celebrations on Monday as their team scored an upset victory over England, securing their place for the next round. Thousands who had assembled in capital Dhaka to cheer for their team broke into celebrations as their team scripted history. They marked the occasion by congratulating each other and breaking into song and dance. Cricket fans said they were happy with the team's performance. Bangladesh edged out England in a thriller by 15 runs in Adelaide on Monday. This is also the first time that England has been knocked out of the World Cup before the quarter-finals. Centurion Mohammad Mehmedullah, who was adjudicated the man of the match, said the team was happy with the performance. I think it's a, it's a great occasion for us, um, great win for us. Um, really happy for the boys, the way they fought in the middle. And um, special thanks to um, the bowlers, how they bowled, uh, especially Rubel. Uh, match did a great job as well and Taskin chipped in as well, so really happy for them as well. Bangladesh along with Sri Lanka, New Zealand and Australia has qualified for the quarter-finals from Pool A. The quarter-finals will begin from the 18th of this month. He might be young, but with his awe-inspiring talent and great fortitude, the little boy knows how to play his cards right. Take a look at how this seven-year-old from South India is all set to enter the record books. With great flexibility, determination and unusual talent, a little boy from India's southern city of Bangalore has become a limbo legend. With his face just inches away from the ground and spreading his legs apart, Gagan Satish sets a new record for limbo skating. Roller skating under 39 cars in 29 seconds, his astonishing feat has been recognised by the India Book of Records as the farthest distance in limbo skating under cars. 
With great joy and happiness, Gangan's father said he always made him practice to set world records. मेरा बच्चे के लिए वो तो स्केटिंग के लिए नहीं डाला है ये चुपके घर का पास रहता है ना वो तो बाजू वाला का मिंगल के वो तो खराब हो जाते तो लेके जाके टाइम पास के लिए वो मेरा बेटे के लिए स्केटिंग को लेके जाके डाला है वो टाइम में आके एक सब लोग आके बात कर वो तो दूसरा जगह में ऐसा गिनीस बुक बुक वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड किया तो बोला है वही मैं माइंड में रख के वो तो प्रैक्टिस करने के लिए स्टार्ट किया The previous record was held by a 9-year-old from Karnataka who skated across 24 cars in 47 seconds. His trainer said Gagan is a very fast learner and is exceptionally talented. When he was 3 uh, and 1/2 years age at that time he joined the skating class. From that time uh, he was little bit very his body was little bit flexible. Uh, he was uh, very good in uh, skating. He learned very early a uh, little bit faster uh, to skate. Uh, after that uh, initially uh under one car we tried him uh, under one car it was success and then uh, 11 cars it was also success and 15 cars and 24 cars then straight away uh, the world record around 39 cars gagan who had earlier won many awards in the sport now aims to make his mark in the guinness book of world records Unfazed by the dictates of society afghan women are sweating out to fulfill the hunger for proving their worth While they are paddling through the revolutionary journey, they still have a long way to go. Take a look. Breaking away the shackles of household chores and family bondages, this group of girls is out to don a different hat altogether. In a country like Afghanistan, which has a long history of Taliban rule, the coming of age for these girls seems to be a breath of fresh air. Rising early every day with the hope of pursuing their dreams, these women wheel through the rough terrain, adding a contrast to the normal life of women in Afghanistan. The women who are members of the country's national women's cycling team, they embark on training sessions on the unused roads in the outskirts of capital Kabul. Determined about breaking the stringent social norms, many said it was a way to prove themselves. و دیگر دخترهای دیگر کشور ثابت می سازم که افغانستان می تواند دخترهاش پیشرفت کنم و می نمی خواهیم دیگر دخترها در قید باشند نه مثلا از نظر ورزش نه از نظر درس پس بانه ما می خواهیم پیشرفت کنند و, و می باید مثل سابق که در وقت طالبا دخترها قید نباشند The team of around 22 girls mostly in their late teens however faces constant challenges at the administration levels while many complain of not receiving salaries for over a year others face an uncooperative atmosphere but despite the constraints the team has pushed through to compete in South Korea Kazakhstan Bangladesh and Pakistan bringing home several awards last year روحی دختر خانم ها نسبت به روحی بچه ها بسیار بالا هست چون شب خلاقه بسیار زیاد است اونا در یک محدودیت خاص زندگی کردن زندگی میکنن و زمانی که این محدودیت خارج میشن میان فضا رو میبینن و ورزش میبینن با کنی میبینن با لباس های خود نمی گنجن women cycling in afghanistan have remained controversial because of the mobility it provides to girls fearing the use of bicycles will give them a means of transportation for going to schools people in the society particularly men look down on them with negative light but the team which currently also trains more than 40 other women has brought a ray of hope with the sport breaking taboos in a patriarchal society Well that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again Future of Indo Pak talks in doubt after envoy meet Huriyat leaders Pakistan and Afghanistan agree on rehabilitation of unregistered refugees And Afghanistan women cyclists bring big amid oppression Our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's only tonight's edition, which is same time tomorrow. Good night.